In this video, I'm going to teach you how to enter data into SPSS, create a histogram and interpret a histogram. So here we have some random data of the number of people who passed or failed an exam classified by whether they take their laptop to class. So we have, so the people are simply asked, do you take your laptop to class? And a proportion of them say yes and a proportion say no. Then those who say yes or no were classified into either whether they passed or failed a specific exam. So we can see that the total number of people evaluated was a hundred people. And we can see that the ones that replied yes to taking their laptop to class and pass the exam were 24, where 16 failed the exam. On the other hand, the ones that replied no, that they do not take their laptop to class and passed the exam were 49, where 11 failed, making a total of 60. So let's say we wanted to enter this data into SPSS and to create a histogram. I'm using IBM SPSS version 26 and I want to create a new data set. So I, on the welcome window, I click on the new data set, open. We have the data set window here, as you can see, and we have the output window. This is where our output after we perform statistical analysis will be displayed. On the data set window is where we are going to enter our data. And the data set window has the data view area and the variable view area. Before entering data, we define the variables in the variable view area area and then we enter the data. For example, for our question here, we can see the different variables we have. First, we have the people who answered yes or no to the question, do you take your laptop to class? Also, we have other variables including passing or failing the exam. So again, let's go back to SPSS. I click on the variable view area and I begin with the name of the first variable which is laptop to class. That variable is laptop to class. The type is numeric. We are going to code it as a numeric variable. Let's ignore the width area. Decimals, we have zero because that variable will not have any decimals. And the label here, let's provide a very descriptive label. The label can be individuals that answered yes or no to taking laptop to class question. That can be the label of that variable. Now, for the values, I can use one to represent the individuals that said yes or that answered yes on the question of whether they take their laptop to class and two, to represent individuals that said no or that answered no to the question of whether they take their laptop to class. We say, okay, no missing values, columns we ignore, align we ignore, measure, it's nominal. Why? Because an individual will only be provided with a choice between two categories of answers that is yes or no and they do not have the options to choose an order of categories or rather a given extent so yes or no answers that's a nominal variable now let's define the second variable for our question the second variable for our question is pass and the third variable is fail on the exam results now we can say pass as a variable again it's a numeric variable because there are specific scores that are that an individual can get in an exam decimals we put zero because our marks as displayed in the table here if you look all the marks have no decimals values we are going to enter that direct let's go to the label section first individuals who passed an exam values we we will not put any values because the values will be represented directly no missing numbers or no missing data Data. columns 8 we leave it at that align we leave it at that now the measure for the scores in an exam is a scale because an individual can get zero in an exam or an individual can get all marks in an exam so that's a scale measure again let's look at another variable which is the fail variable it's numeric window of eight decimals zero label here individuals who failed an exam values none missing none columns Columns, we leave it at that. Align, we leave it at that. Measure, again, it's scale. Why? Because an individual can pass using a certain extent. For example, they can get 12 marks or 24 marks or fail to a certain ex extent. For example, they can get zero marks. The measure for that variable is scale. Now, because we have defined our variables, 
we can go to the third step which is to enter the data into SPSS. Let's begin with individuals that answered yes or no to taking laptop to class question. That's that variable. Again, we use one for yes and two for no. So we only have either yes or no groups. And if we were to click this button here, known as the value labels, we can toggle between the codes to the labels of that of those variables. We click, we have one and two, we click, we have yes or no. Again, the individuals that passed are 24 and 49 for no. We can enter the second section of the data for individuals who failed the exam, that is 16. And for the no group, that is 11. Now, we've entered the data for all the variables. We can proceed to the next step, which is to create a histogram in SPSS. So to create a histogram in SPSS, what we do is we come to this section called graphs and we click on the chart builder and we click OK. This is our chart builder and we have different options here to choose from. In the gallery section, we have bar, line, area, pie, scatter plot, histogram, high, low, box plot, and dual axis. Let's go to the histogram area because we want to create a histogram. Now, we have different options. This one is to create a simple histogram. This one is to create a stacked histogram, a frequency polygon, and a population pyramid. What we want to do is to create a simple histogram. So you can double click on the simple histogram section or you can drag and drop the simple histogram here. Now, when plotting graphs in SPSS, the X axis will normally represent the different categorical variables that you have in your data, while the Y axis will represent the frequency. What do we mean by this? For example, in our question, the individuals that answered yes or no to taking laptop class is the categorical variable that we have here. So we drag that variable, the different categorical variables on the X axis. Again, we can use the individuals who passed an exam and we drag it on the Y axis. We can also add another section of frequency who are individuals who failed an exam so as to show the different frequencies. So we drag, again, we drop. We have this dialog that opens that asks you to add another category of variables on that y-axis section and we say okay because we want to compare between the individuals who passed and the individuals who failed. When you add all the necessary variables on your chart, both on the X and the Y axis, you click OK. After you click OK, the output window will pop up. I want to display my output window here. The output window will pop up and you can see what we have on the output window. This is the graph that we are able, this is the histogram that we are able to produce. And we can see it's labeled simple histogram, mean of individuals who failed an exam by individuals that answered yes or no to taking laptop to class question. So I can simplify this label. I double click on the label and the chat editor pops up. I can delete there. So that's the chat editor. To retrieve the chat editor, you just double click and the chat editor will appear. You can edit different sections of your histogram, including the chart size, the size of the chart, the border, which are the field border, which is the field or the colors of the bars. We can, you have the different colors here. You can edit them there and close that. So by double clicking, the chart editor emerges again by double clicking on it, you can change the different elements of your histogram. So we have our histogram here and we can see the histogram represents what we want to understand very well. So we have individuals that answered yes or no to taking laptop to class question. That's how you label. Remember, always provide detailed labels for your histogram so that any third party can observe exactly what you are trying to show on your histogram. 
So, when you look at our histogram, you can see clearly that individuals that answered yes to taking their laptop to class question performed poorly in an exam and also had a significant proportion of people that failed an exam compared to individuals that answered no to the question whether they take their laptop to class. So, if you look at the individuals that answered no, that they do not take their laptop to class, nearly 50 of them passed the exam while only, while those who failed were above, only slightly above 10. On the other hand, for the individuals who answered yes to taking their laptop to class, you have at least only above 20 of them passed the exam, while more than 15 or even 16 of them failed the exam. So a significant proportion of the individuals that failed the exam took their laptop to class compared to those who did not take their laptop to class, which is clearly evident in our histogram. So that's how you plot and interpret a histogram using SP. PSS. Did you find value from this video? Make sure you like and subscribe to keep you in the loop for more of such videos in the future.